Hi, this is Pastor David Rosales of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California. This upcoming Sunday morning, I will begin a series on marriage and the family. My first message will be the introduction. And in the message, I'll be sharing a few things that pertain to marriage as we experience it in our day. Today, marriage as an institution throughout the world has been redefined. Many have rejected the once accepted concept of what was called a traditional family. They consider such a concept to be outdated, unreasonable, and simply unworkable. At one time, there was a definition of a traditional family that was accepted by the majority. A traditional family was defined as a unit consisting of a man and woman who were married to one another and who often had children born to them. It consisted of a breadwinning father and a stay-at-home mother who would care for the home and the children that were born to her and her husband after marriage. In our day, this basic definition of marriage and family has changed. In today's culture, the new definition of family does not require marriage. For many, to be considered a family only requires people caring about one another and living together. For them, to be a family does not require marriage but exists because they say they are one. Many people find it preferable to live together without ceremony or contract. Sadly, this is also found to be true amongst some who profess to be Christians. Without fully realizing it, they are actually sinning against the Lord. Malachi chapter 2, verse 11 refers to marriage as God's holy institution. This reveals that marriage is God's idea and design and it is regarded as holy. Malachi chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 speak of marriage as a covenant, not simply a legal contract. It also gives us insight that God intended marriage to produce godly offspring. Faith in God and service to Him was to be passed on throughout generations. The New Testament reveals marriage to be a picture of Jesus and the church. As such, it's a spiritual union that is not to be regarded as anything but sacred. Living together and sexual activity outside of marriage is called fornication. If the person living with someone is still married to another person, it's called adultery. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 says, Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. This makes it very clear that such a sin is very serious and ultimately results in serious everlasting consequences. Today, living together has become a very common practice. The Centers for Disease Control and National Center for Health Statistics reported in 1995, 34% of unmarried women between ages of 15 and 44 moved in with a man for the first time. In the year 2002, the percentage went up to 43%. Between the years 2006 and 2010, the percentage rose to 48%. Interestingly, that works out to one in four women living with a man by age 20. This also represents almost three in four by the age of 30. Nearly 75% of women ages 30 or younger said they've lived with a partner outside of marriage compared to 70% in 2002 and 62% in 1995. With so many living together, the questions that should be asked are, do these unions last? And do they ultimately lead to marriage? Some say living together is like a test drive and it should be done before committing. Is that good counsel? One study found that 40% of women living with significant others for the first time between 2006 and 2010 transitioned to marriage within three years, while 32% of those relationships remained the same and 27% were dissolved. As you might see, for many, marriage doesn't seem to matter that much. Does marriage matter to God? From a Christian perspective, it most certainly does. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 reads, The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. This reveals that God created marriage. As he said, I will make him a helper. This verse also reveals that the man was created first establishing the pattern of authority in the home. And we'll see this in future studies. It also reveals that 
Eve is a helper that is comparable to him. The word comparable speaks of one who is similar to him, literally speaks of her as his reflected image. Eve was his counterpart, suitable in nature and one like himself in shape and disposition. She was one in whom he saw his own image, saw as his counterpart. She was his second self, corresponding to his moral and intellectual nature. Interestingly, the first thing that is ever called not good is that man should be alone, which emphasizes man's need for a companion. There were angels. There was the world of animal life, but this wasn't enough. He needed someone like himself, and without her, he was alone. He needed another human being to establish social relationships with. He needed to give love to someone like himself, but was simply an individual. He needed someone to share his feelings with and to be part of his actual life. With this in mind, God said, I'll make him a helper. Later, we see that God brought Eve to Adam. Adam didn't seek her out. She was brought to him. We see that God presented Eve to Adam, establishing the holiness and seriousness of marriage. Eve was a match for him at his side, making her fit for him and corresponding to him. She was formed from him and was to be the perfect resemblance of the man, possessing neither inferiority nor superiority, but being in all things like and equal to himself. She was not less, nor was she better. She was simply different, corresponding to his exact need. And in this we see by design that our mates are intended to fill in our gaps and complete us. In marriage, we learn from one another, accept one another as is, and in doing so, work together and ultimately, as we grow together, are slowly molded into the image of God. If you're presently married, may the Lord continue working in your lives together. If you're unmarried, may you continue seeking Him in all things while serving without distraction. Should you desire marriage, may the Lord bring to you the one best suited for you. As I mentioned, I will begin a series on marriage this upcoming Sunday, and I'm looking forward to it. This is Pastor David Rosales of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California.